Alan Mullally, who served as CEO of Ford Motor Company from 2006 to 2014, is often cited as a modern example of confident leadership. When he took the helm, Ford was in dire straits. However, with his clear vision and unwavering confidence, Mullally led a successful turnaround. He introduced the One Ford Plan, streamlining processes, reducing costs and improving quality. He had such confidence in the Ford brand that he revived one of their best-selling cars of all time, which I'll reveal in a moment. He sold off Jaguar, Land Rover, Aston Martin and Volvo and reduced their share in Mazda so they could focus on their core business, selling Ford motor cars. His confident decision-making, combined with open communication and accountability, helped Ford become profitable again without taking a government bailout, unlike all of its competitors. In contrast, Elizabeth Holmes, founder and CEO of the now defunct health technology company Terranos, showed signs of insecure leadership right from the start. Despite her charisma and vision, the absence of transparency and accountability became defining characteristics of her leadership. She made grandiose claims, of course, about Terranos's technology that ultimately proved to be, well, <coughs> bullshit. As investigations began, it was revealed that the company was using commercial analyzers for most tests instead of its proprietary technology. This lack of transparency and defensiveness indicated a leadership style rooted in insecurity and deception, which eventually led to the company's downfall and her imprisonment. The good news is you get to choose confidence or insecurity. More on that in a moment. In other random facts from the interwebs, mahouts, who are elephant trainers, typically fasten a thin metal chain around the leg of a fully grown elephant and secure the other end to a small wooden peg driven into the ground. Despite the fact that the elephant stands at a towering height of 10 feet and weighs 10,000 pounds, it could easily break the chain, uproot the feeble wooden peg and escape to freedom with minimal effort. Surprisingly though, it never attempts to do so. The world's mightiest land animal, capable of uprooting a substantial tree as effortlessly as snapping a toothpick, remains captive to a small wooden peg and a flimsy chain. But why does this happen? Well, as it turns out, the elephant's trainers employed the same method to domesticate the poor thing when it was just a baby. And during that time, the chain and peg were actually strong enough to restrain the baby elephant. Whenever it tried to break free, the metal chain would yank it back. Eventually, the young elephant realized that escape was futile and stopped attempting to do so. Now, even though the elephant has reached full maturity, it still perceives the chain and the peg and recalls what it learned as a baby, that they are insurmountable obstacles. Despite the fact that this is no longer true, the elephant's self-imposed limitations endure. If we reflect on it, we are all similar to elephants. Each of us possesses incredible power within ourselves, along with our own metaphorical chains and pegs self-limiting thoughts and beliefs that hinder our progress. Now, sometimes these are rooted in childhood experiences or past failures, while other times they stem from things we were simply told when we were younger. The crucial realization is this, we must learn from the past while also being willing to challenge our assumptions and perspectives regarding the present. Life is not stagnant, my friends, and it is possible to break free from these constraints. Don't let your past bullshit butcher your future potential. You've got nothing! Nothing! The good news is, as I said, you get to choose confidence or insecurity. You get to choose what to believe. The average human has over 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot. No wonder we're all exhausted. Most of them, by the way, are pointless. A lot of them are actually quite disturbing, and only a few will serve you on your journey. So choose to believe the thoughts that are moving you forward instead of the ones that are holding you back. I get a lot of feedback from people saying that they don't have the confidence to charge three, five or $10,000 a month, whatever your number is. And I say to them, you are right. As long as you say you are not worth $5,000 a month, then you are not worth $5,000 a month. Look at the evidence in your life and the feedback or testimonials that you receive from your clients and readjust your sense of self-worth accordingly. Oh, and uh, if you don't have any evidence or real work in the world that you can point to to justify your worth to yourself, then you know what your next mission is. Go and get it. Okay, it's time to draw on the screen again. Here we go. And we can see on this model that there is a direct correlation between what your clients earn and what they are willing to invest. And what happens when we first start out is we spend most of our time in the comfortable zone, the safe zone, 
the area of the market where we're most comfortable because the stakes aren't very high, and that is serving small business owners who don't earn very much, but also aren't willing to invest very much. The number of conversations I've had with people who say, I just don't know anyone who's willing to spend $3,000 a month on my services. And I say to them, well, that's correct, you don't. So what's your job? Go and introduce yourself to people who have the capacity to spend more than $3,000 a month and who aren't broke. Because if you serve broke clients, you too will go broke. Now, uh, a few of us break free eventually and start serving a sector of the market that earns a little bit more. And then a few of us break free from that sector and start serving clients who earn even more and are willing to invest even more. And then only a handful break free into this sector of the market where clients earn a lot and are willing to invest a lot. Now, my observation is that the thing that keeps us trapped here in this sector, and by the way, this is the most competitive end of the market because that's where most people stay because it is comfortable and they think it is safe. I would suggest that it's actually quite dangerous to stay there, but that's a conversation for another day. The thing that keeps us there are assumptions like no one will pay me more than $5,000 for a website. And that is an assumption. It's based on your worldview and your current experience. As soon as you sell a website for $5,000 or ten dollars or $15,000, you have a new truth. And that truth now allows you to see the facts and the evidence, which is someone will pay me 10 grand for a website or 20 grand for a website or $3,000 a month. And as Fletcher Reed says, the truth will set you free, ladies and gentlemen. So my question is, are you stuck here? And what is preventing you from breaking free out here? By the way, that best-selling Ford that Mullally revived, the Ford Taurus. Who would have thunk? So don't be an elephant, break free and choose confidence. Ah!